Today my voyage of the Great British Coast takes me about as far northeast as you can go, to beautiful Aberdeenshire in Scotland. I've come all this way to find out more about the dish that we all love. You know what it is, fish and chips. There are nearly 11,000 fish and chip shops in the UK and it's a huge industry worth about 1.2 billion pounds. But the old saying, there's plenty more fish in the sea, seems to be far from the truth. Recent estimations say that about a third of the world's major fisheries are overexploited. I mean, I love fish and chips, but one of the worrying facts is that one of our favourite dishes has got us into this state. And that's because of our love of cod. The UK's favourite fish choice is cod, which accounts for six out of ten portions of fish and chips sold. But haddock is a fabulous alternative, and here, up in Scotland, it's the number one choice for fish suppers. I'm at Peterhead Port on my way to meet some fishermen. This place is the main landing point for North Sea haddock, which is the first UK white fish to be certified MSC, which stands for Marine Stewardship Council. This means that the haddock comes from a sustainable source and isn't destroying fish stocks. To learn more, I'm following the journey of this haddock from port to plate, and skipper John Buchan Jr. has just come in for a week out at sea to land his catch. How many tons have you got? About 55 tons. 55 tons, so that's prepared fish, all gutted, all, in ice. All gutted, in ice. Eight but, stumps on them, the only when they've, when they've got. Ready to go in the market? Ready to go in the market. So effectively tomorrow night this could be an efficient chip shop? Yep, I would say, if not today, tomorrow if night. not today? Yep. Wow. John's fish goes straight to Peterhead Fish Market, where, after a quick change, I'm meeting Danny Cooper. He works as a buyer, and it's his job to source the best fish at the best price for companies, including fish and chip shops. So when you've got a fish and chip shop who asks yep. you to buy for them, what, what are they looking for? They're looking for predominantly a, a bigger size fish, you know, okay. like a nice chunky fish with bigger type of flakes. That's, that's what they tend to look for. 72! Danny will buy over 200 boxes of fish per day, and I want to see how this old-fashioned auction market worked. Five of joints! Hello. 85 of joints! Hello. Is that six? Aye, aye. 85 of joints! But I needed a bit of help translating. What, what, what did you say to him? Well, he that... was shouting a 90 pound for a choice. To pay a bigger price for the choice of the fish. Oh, right. And that's the choice lot here? Yeah, that's the youngest fish. You know, the, eye, the eyes are bright, they red gills, that's what you look for. Yeah. And how much did you pay for them? They were 90 pounds. How many, how many fish did you get in there for that? Maybe just over 100 fish in there. 100, 100 250 fillets you should get out of that box. In under two hours, all this fish is sold and hurriedly packed off. In the case of our haddock, it goes to Danny's processing factory, where it's graded by size, filleted, skinned, and then boxed up ready for the chippy. And I'm following it there. A bit further down the coast in Stonehaven is a fish and chip shop that's leading the way for the industry. The bay owned by Callum Richardson is the first fish and chip shop in the UK to offer their customers MSC haddock. Well, Phil, this is my fish that's come in, yep. uh, straight from Danny Cooper. Uh -huh. You were on the market with him, and this is six hours old from him buying it at the market, processing it and taking it to me. So what's the price difference between that piece of fish, yep. that fillet, and perhaps bog standard haddock? This, this is going to be about 20 pence a, a fillet dearer oh, so than non it. No, it's not a lot, really, at the end of the day. Are your customers happy to pay the increased price in, in, in fish? Well, I haven't actually put the price up. Uh, I'm willing to absorb that price because of the passion and I want to make sure that there's, I'm selling fully sustainable fish and passing that on to the customer so that there will be fish for the future for my children to eat and work with. Cooking? Yep. Can I have a look? Yeah, I'll show you old, old new tricks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what are you saying? How long are they cooking there for? Yeah, that'll be about seven minutes. You cook any to order? There's nothing in there, is there? No, nothing at all. Is that your secret, you think? The secret's passion. Is it? <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Finally, the bit I've been looking forward to. It's time to eat some of those fish and chips. Wow, that's amazing. That is so fresh. Before leaving, Callan gives me some of this fresh uncooked haddock so I can create a recipe of my own. If you want fish and chips, you can go to a local fish and chip shop. 
But I'm going to show you a really simple dish and make use of these beautiful surroundings whilst I'm here. So what you need to do is get a bag like this. And it's a barbecue bag. It's got a nice clear plastic top on it. And then lay the fish on a board like that. And then I've got some ready-made tomato pesto here. So you open the bag up and you lay the fish in the bag just by the window, add in a couple of tablespoons of olive oil into there. Because there's not much moisture going in here, I'm relying on the fish to cook in its own juices. So to help that along, I'm going to put a little bit of lemon and a tiny little bit of basil, chuck that in. And then you seal the bag up really tightly, making sure the seal's on top. And all you do, just pop that on top of your coals, like that, and leave that to cook for around about five to six minutes. Now what you'll see is the liquid starting to bubble and the fish will go opaque, which means it goes slightly white. At that point, just lift it off the coals, and then the great thing about these bags is a little tiny tab here, so you can pull the tab up. And just look at that. What I'm going to do is rock it here, put that in the juices, give the fish to one side. The great thing about this haddock is, is I know exactly where it's come from. And that makes it taste even better.